Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be making environments for beginners. So this will be a complete beginner tutorial. I will be going over every single step because I saw a lot of comments asking me to make something like this. A lot of you are beginners and my videos are mostly focused on intermediate users since I don't go over like the shift A or the how to rotate in Blender. So we're going to change that. So the first thing we need to do is just delete the default cube and just decide what we want to do with our landscape. There are a lot of different ways to create a landscape in Blender. And I've gone over a lot of these ways in my past videos. So right now, let's just choose the simplest one, which is the displacement. So just add in a plane and scale it up to about 25 times so it's 50 meters by 50 meters and then by pressing ctrl a we can apply the scaling this will be really important later we can rename this plane to say something like ground and then we can hit tab to go into edit mode and then subdivide this by pressing right mouse button and clicking the subdivide menu we want to do this a bunch of times until it looks something like this or maybe this what we want to do then is go over to these modifier properties add in a modifier which is the displacement modifier then click this new button this will add in a texture that will be right under here uh, as you can see you can choose your own image or you can use the noise textures in blender so what we want to do is just choose this clouds and then change the size to be something like 50 which you can do by just clicking on here and typing in 50 otherwise it will be just clipped to two uh, maybe we want to do 25 change the depth to the maximum so we get this really textured look and then right here we can set the strength to whatever we want i will be going for 12.5 this looks all right if you want to change the seed of this you can't really do that in the texture here so what we can do is just change the coordinates to the object add in a empty uh, something like a sphere will work fine and then we select this and if we change the location of this we will get a different seed it's really useful since every time you basically do this you will get the same result so to not let your environments look the same every time uh, you can just change the seed with an empty right now i just want to add in a water plane applying this scale as well and then just moving it down until we get some nice water bodies. Something like this. Yeah. And um, before we go on with the video, I just wanted to talk about our sponsor, Frame. Frame is a multi-user platform with up to 300 people at once. It's a place to showcase your work, create social environments, and it's accessible right away from a link on desktop, mobile, or VR. You can bring in your own 3D models with the GLB file format. You can do this as models or just a full frame environment. You don't need a code or anything. You can just sign up with the link in the description. If you use the code Blender at checkout, you will get 25% off a plan, but otherwise, Otherwise, it's just completely free. Go over to framevr.io to learn more. Then we want to set up our camera somewhere. So find a nice place, like right here. Pressing Shift A, we can add a camera. By pressing Control Alt and Zero on our numpad, we can teleport the camera to our location. And then we can set up the camera by pressing G, moving it right here. Or we can press G and Z twice to move it backwards and forwards. So we can get a little bit of foreground right here. Uh, mid ground with the water and then the background. If we go to the render view and change this to cycles and then CPU to GPU, we can see this in the rendered view. We can't really see anything, so we want to go over to the world properties, change the color to the environment texture by pressing this yellow circle and then open and go over to your HDRI that you can download from sites like Polyhaven. I really like this misty morning. I'll leave a link to it in the description. What we want to do now is just add in materials. So first I'm going to add in the water material. Lately I've been working on some procedural materials so I'm going to be using those for this project. I have this dirty water that I want to use for this scene. This mimics the dirty water as you can see in some ponds or ditches or somewhere else. And you can change the amount of algae in here. This is all procedural and I'll be releasing this soon. 
if you press Control b we can limit our view to everything that matters and then we can go over to our properties and add in a crass particle system from botanic if you don't have this don't worry you can just add in a particle system yourself right here just just pressing this plus icon and it's not really that complicated you just press plus and then here then go to advanced select rotation go over to render and then go over to objects select your grass material right here and then it should probably work you can change the rotations right here and then the amount right here and that's pretty much it so our grass is already looking great but now we want to add in some trees as well so now i've added in some trees i can add in a vertex group if you go back to the solid view you can go into the top view press w once so we get this circular select tool and then we can select some areas where our trees will be in so something like here and then in our particle system we can go all the way down to vertex groups and click the density to get our group and our trees will only be in the places where we specified what we want to do now is just change the scale randomness up a little bit because trees are not always the same size something like this to get some interesting sizes and we're going to be changing the focal length since I want some more of the trees in my frame. Something like this. And this is pretty much what I'm looking for. It's still pretty rough, but it will do the trick. I just want to change the color of, of a couple of things to match with the surroundings. So luckily for me, I have added this U node. So I can change the color really easily. I also want to change the color on the trees. So a really easy way of doing that is just adding in a U saturation node uh, in between the color of the trees you're using. Uh, but luckily for me, with the botanic, I have this U slide as well. And I just want to make this a little bit greener, but not too green, just to match with the grass. This looks about right. Uh, what I'm doing right now is just making the trees match with the uh, water algae and then the grass match as well. So you get really cohesive colors and I've talked about this in my last video about improving as a 3D artist. Uh, that colors are really important in our 3D renders. And it looks really dead now, but we can change that in editing or we could just leave it like this if we really like this look. I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, maybe with some volumetrics added into this so we can try that add in a cube and i just want to rename this to keep organized show the overlays again so we can see where our cube is and what i want to do now is just go over to the cube by pressing period on our numpad edit mode by pressing tab and then moving it up by pressing g and z so the origin point sits on the bottom face and now if you go back to object mode, we can scale this up and it will just scale up, but not like down where we don't want it. So you can scale this 25 times. So it's the same size as our scene. Apply the scaling and maybe just move this down a little bit since we don't really need that high of a volume and move this down. So it's underneath the water. And if we go into render view, we can see everything is black. That's because our material isn't transmissive. So we can add in a volumetric material and we can just make this really quickly. It's not really that complicated. Just delete the principal PSDF, add in a volume scatter node, plug the volume into the volume and then density to like 0 0.05 something. And it's a choppy to 0.8 and then change the color to something stylistic something like a bit orangey maybe a reddish yeah this looks really cool it signals there is some forest fire nearby somewhere maybe in the background so i really like that idea and i'm just going to add in a plane scale this up 25 times as well it's really repetitive making these environments but it's also really rewarding just 
enable proportional editing go over to the vertex select move this up we can scroll so we can uh, change the proportional editing scale and then just make this small little hill if we have this selected we can go over to the our ground and control select it so this one is orange and our plane is red then if we hit ctrl l we can link the materials so this plane gets the same material as this plane which is exactly what we want right now we can see that our plane is out of our view so we want to move this by pressing g and just block out the horizon so it looks like there is more there than there actually is this is really helpful if you want to fake uh, something being there just duplicate this a bunch of times until the horizon is blocked off and this adds the illusion that there's more behind the forest but there actually is not there's nothing there it's just these planes we can move them forward a little bit so it's really dark there so what i'm trying to do with my camera angle is just showing a lot of the water and then having our shoreline at about uh, the first third so if i just enable the composition guides you can see our third is right here it might be a little bit hard to see on youtube but it's right here and that adds some visual interest to that area and then our second third is right here and we don't really have to do anything with that so the next thing we want to do is ju just add some visual interest to something so we can either do that by setting a tree on fire or just adding in one of my cars in the water or something else it's really up to you uh, this is the artistic process i talked about in my last video so this is all up to you i think for my scene i just want to add in maybe like a aircraft like this one Yeah, so now the plane is yellow. We can go back and just look at it. We just change the color slightly. And the trees are gone here. We could, of course, add in some fallen down trees. Yeah, this blocks out the rest of the scene and adds some visual interest. So adding in the tree on the plane wing kind of adds the idea that the plane crashed into the tree and just took it down with it. Right now our problem is just making everything look realistic and give everything a story by doing that. So I want this tree to lay on there. Not take too much away from the plane. Just add in some visual interest right there. Right now, we're just looking at this with a keen eye. That's pretty much the only thing we're really doing. Like, I changed the color here, but I did not change it here. So we can just copy it over. So the antennas right here have the same color. I am missing some rocks, so I'm just going to make a new vertex group right here. Uh, and I want this to be in the shoreline, so I'm just going to select this and something here a little bit and then just assign it. Add in some rocks here. The water is still, so that means the uh, plane has been here for a while. I also added in some scratches to the plane But maybe we need some fines right here because I do want to break up this a nasty line right here I can't really say I'm a fan So I'm just going to delete it as you can tell uh, a lot of environments is small little tweaks 
uh, because we basically had this environment set up in about 15 minutes but then i was messing with it for the next 30 minutes but i think we're nearing the end on this we could also just delete this particle system and set it on fire i think i'm going to do that yeah i'm going to do that so to do that i have a special geometry nodes that you can buy with the link in the description it's not an affiliate link or anything it's just uh, something i enjoy using in blender so i think you should be able to use it as well so we're going to be opening the flame generator just selecting the flame and copying it over this is a lot of flames so i'm just going to go take the flame right here and then change the density to like one and then go over to the render properties change the light path uh, transparent to the maximum so it doesn't get black when there's too many transparent objects over each other as you can see it's also animated so we can make an animation it's pretty cool but i do want these to move that way uh, where the plane came from for some reason so you can just change the force right here just add a little bit of fire not too much because i don't want to set the forest on fire we could also just like remove this as well i think i'll just remove it so i think this will be my environment to be honest maybe just add in some depth of field and then select our plane and really shallow depth of field just preview the right here it's easier yeah we like uh, 0.8 and this is how i make environments i hope you could follow along um the plane of course you could just download a regular plane from sketchfab or cg trade or something and i think this is really doable i'll post the dirty water material on my uh, monthly support on gumroad so you can use it before i release the entire pack uh, but I'm working on a lot of materials that are really amazing and have the same amount of control uh, But because I use this one in a tutorial, I think I'll just share it with you before I release the pack Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair because you can follow along So right now the only thing we need to do is just render this out How I find my samples I use is just by toggling the view looking at the samples here and where it starts to speed up so that's at about let's see 64 at about 64 so to speed up that's with a noise threshold of 0.1 so now we have 0 0.01 so logically you would say at about 640 our noise threshold should be should be achieved but i always tend to do just like the double of what it speeds up at and then just leaving the noise threshold as it is so 128 is fine and right here 64 is fine if you denoise you can see all the noise disappears but i don't think i want to denoise because noisy is really cool and i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something and i hope to see you back in the next video so that's it goodbye thanks for 5k subscribers but no joke uh thanks for the support i really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.